Hi, I'm Jesse Adler, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I will be building a uh, RC lifeboat like uh, Peter Streeple did a few years ago. I'll link his video up there, or for you it's probably up there. But yeah, let's get right into it. I've 3D printed uh, two parts, and I epoxied them together earlier this morning. And then I, yeah, even though it was already white, I um, spray painted it some more. And yeah, it's pretty good. It floats. This is going to be the bottom of the boat. And I'll put a picture of his uh, full design up there, so you should be able to see what it'll look like when I'm done. I'm going to kind of be designing my boat along the lines of this one. I'm not sure if I'll end up making a YouTube video about this one. If I did, it will go up there. If there's nothing there, I didn't make one. But if I turn the switch on... Oh, there we go. You can see the motor's working. And the motor's right down there. It's a printer motor. And there's the propeller. And it actually moves along pretty well. I'll put a clip of it moving on right now. But uh, what I'll be using is one of these printer motors that I've salvaged from a printer. Go watch my video about taking apart a printer up there. But yeah, um, I ordered though a drive shaft, so I don't have to worry about water getting in the back. So my first order of business is to uh, figure out how I'm gonna steer this thing. Let's design a rudder. So here's some brass, uh, or I think they're copper tubes that I bought. And this one has a diameter of 3 30 seconds of an inch. This one has a diameter of 1 8 of an inch. And I will put up images to both of them up there and right there. But, um, here, I'll show you why these are so good. These are so good. Here's my 1 8 inch one right here. Because they nest inside of here perfectly. Like, there's almost no gap between them. So I'll be using that mechanism for my rudder. You'll see what I mean in a bit. So I just designed this, uh, rudder on Tinkercad. And you can see it's a bit crude, but I think it should work. And let's print it out. I just realized that I should add that front triangle as well to add on some good hydrodynamics. So now I'm going to go print it out. I'm super excited. This uh, drive shaft just came for it. You can see the propellers on the end. There's a bearing inside of there. Here's the shaft. I've taped it down to this block. Then there's a universal joint, and here's my 12-volt motor, and I'm going to hook it up to my 12-volt battery right here. Let's make sure it works. It works pretty well. Now you can see I drilled a hole, and I put this inside of it, and yeah, it works pretty well. It's been moving pretty fast, so I haven't quite had time to document much. But I just siliconed that, and I hooked up a battery with a switch. So, yeah, let's keep going. And the silicone is now dry, and I tested it out in the water, and it doesn't leak. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't record that. And I just siliconed the motor in, so uh, once that's dry by tonight, I should get a good video of it running. The top just finished, but you can see there's a lot of like defects in it in the top layer. And I think that's probably because I've been printing in uh, 0.25 layer height, and for this one, for some reason, I forgot to turn it back to that, because I had been printing at 0.2 then. So this was printed at 0.2 layer height, which shouldn't be an issue, but I guess it was. But I think I'm going to fill those holes in with epoxy, so it shouldn't be an issue. And finally, you get a look at what it will look like. You can kind of see that. It looks like one of those rescue boats. And it should be unflippable once I get the weight right. So even if it flips over, it will always right itself. So that'll be a pretty cool feature. But yeah, let's fill these in with epoxy. I haven't gotten the screws in yet, but I've painted it, and this is a general idea of what the rudder mechanism will look like. There'll be a screw right in them there, there'll be screws holding it on in there, but it will uh, pivot on this point, you see? It's not really in focus. And then from that hole right there, it will attach to the servo. But yeah, let's get some screws in. I've just finished uh, printing out and putting the rudder on, and it looks pretty good. It actually looks pretty good, yeah. But uh, the sorry, the bottom screw is not able to get in there. It's too far to the side, and if I move it any closer, it'll hit into the propeller when moving. Even this is pretty close, but I figured it was far enough. But now I need to drill a little hole so that the wire can go out. And I'm going to be using these... Uh, uh, metal pipes for that so that water does not get in if it flips over. So yeah, let's drill that hole. So here it is. I've glued that piece of pipe inside. I cut it and glued it. 
I've glued that uh, screw in so it doesn't wiggle anymore, and I've put this on the end of here. So let's wait until tomorrow morning when that epoxy is dry, and let's put it back all together and will the rudder system work. While that's going on, I wanted to take a minute to talk about my channel. And you might have noticed that I've been putting out a video every Saturday, and that is what I plan to keep on doing, so make sure to tune in every Saturday to see that video once a week. Also, um, I'm doing a few shorter videos in between bigger build videos. Like, this is a larger build video as long as the la- as well as the last, um, how to make the, uh, disc sander ones. And then there's some intertwined ones in the middle, like, uh, the what's inside weed whacker and how to build the foam cutter. But yeah, just because it takes a bit longer to build these larger products because I have to order parts online. But yeah, let's get back right into the build. So here it is, the rudder system is done. I had to reprint this part because it broke the other one. But yeah, now I just need to get a servo in there. So I've set up the servo mechanism now, and you can see that I bent it up here and the servo's right in there. So when I move the servo, let me get that in there better. Move that up. When I move the servo, it moves the rudder. Pretty good. So I'm waterproofing this servo right now. I took off the lid and I'm squirting some WD-40 inside of there. I'll put a video up in the upper right hand corner right now that shows you how to do it more in depthly by flight test. I just wired in this switch between the receiver battery and the receiver so that um, you can hear on the radio when it turns on. I'll flip the switch now. Pretty good. Let's continue. So I'm super excited. I'm almost done. You can see I have a ton of wires in there. I've glued the batteries in. So now I'm going to put a layer of glue around the edge and glue the top on. That is the final step. So I didn't record it, but basically this is what happened. I put it together. I put it in the pool to test. I started driving it, the nose went down, like the front of this actually went down into the water and it completely sank, got full of water. I got it out, it was not working. I took it apart, it still was not working. Um, it wasn't connecting to the uh, transmitter. I then sprayed some WD-40 inside of this uh, receiver and it worked. So, magical stuff. But, uh, you see, it now works. It was not working a second ago. But yeah, that's good. But that tells me that I have too much weight in the front, and that's why it's going down. So I need to move some of the weight back. Just finished making this front control panel. There's a bit of black ABS plastic here, two switches, and the antenna for the receiver that come out. And I didn't record myself making this because it took this entire morning. I've spent about four hours on it so far. Just making this one part because so many things went wrong. On the back, you can see it's hot glued in. And I glued the receiver up there so that if water starts pooling in the bottom, it won't get on the receiver, which is like the most expensive and fragile part of this whole thing. And yeah, it's waterproof, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So I put the screws in and I've tightened it down, so let's test it to see if it's waterproof. Okay, are any bubbles coming out? Okay, so bubbles come out on the top. So there's a small leak there. Let's go fix it. Mm -hmm. 